Well, now here with me to discuss Prime Minister Modi and his visit to Britain is the artist Anish Kapoor and the owner of Cobra Beer, Lord Billamoria, who is also a member of the Prime Minister's India Global Advisory Council. Anish Kapoor, you've vlogged today and uh, you've got a pretty remarkable line in it. You say the Hindu version of the Taliban is asserting itself. Strong stuff. Strong stuff indeed, but I think it is uh, what's really happening in India today. Um, you know, I, I saw uh, Modi a few minutes ago on your show um, talking about India as the land of the Buddha, land of tolerance, uh, land of compassion. It feels to me as if all of that is being eroded in the name of the majority. So we have Hin Hindu India for Hindu Indians, um, 500 million others, Muslims amongst them. Um, harder and harder for them to maintain um, their traditional role in Indian society. So what, what vision society. of India do you have that he doesn't share? I mean, how could it be? I'm romantic enough to believe that compassion and tolerance matters. Um, that's perhaps Gandhi's India, um, one that seemed to be able to include um, banning beef, which is what's happened recently, and then murdering people for eating beef. Um, uh, what's happening? How can, uh, I, I sense every time I go to India, uh, an atmosphere of fear. Um, how can my colleague artists and me work in that, in that context? You know, when is it possible for us to properly criticize the government or the situation and not be slapped with a charge of sedition. It's, ha it's happening all the time. I know young artists who have this, who, who have had this happen to them just recently. What well, do they do in that situation? Let me put this vision to you, Lord Villamoria. I have just been with Prime Minister Narendra Modi um, in Parliament and heard him make the most brilliant speech He's, he's normally comfortable speaking in Hindi, and he's one of the, I would say, one of the best orators in the world in Hindi. He spoke in English. His speech was superb. There was humor, it was wide ranging, it was statesmanlike, it was working on a go, global but stage. With respect, that is and, talking. What and, about what and, he's talking about? Oh, and again, I've just heard him in the Guild Hall speaking to a purely business audience. That was, again, hugely well received. Anish, I hear what you're saying, but I'm sorry, you know it's I, go true, to India, too, I go to India. Seven or eight times a year, I never feel fear once. What I will say... Well, what, is what about that, the specifics of what, an Indian what, what, Taliban what, what, asserting that, 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 I, I'm sorry, that is just... I, I just don't agree with that at all. Um, well, but there is a majoritarian view that seems just say, to be if I may say, filling the, all the, the space. The, the BJP, when they were in power, in, until 2004, it was called the India Shining Government. Economically, the country was flying, and yet... They got thrown out by the electorate. Why? Because their growth was not seen to be inclusive. Now, Narendra Modi's got a very clear vision of what he wants to do, make in India, digital India, the cities, clean India. However, if it's not inclusive growth, he knows he's seen what's happened in the past. So he's very aware of that. Well, banning beef doesn't sound very inclusive. It uh, doesn't to me at all. I mean, um, the, I, I insist that there's an increasing hist increasingly hysterical Hinduization of the Indian context. What that does, I'm afraid, is exclude the lowest, exclude the poorest. It makes poverty worse. Well, it, 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 it reinforces caste. Well, I it does thinking... all the things that we think, as good thinking people, we want to go in the opposite. Well, what India, we want to India be has in, entrenched in its constitution anti-casteism. India is a secular, pluralist country. Come on, I, have, I was if born and brought up in Hyderabad, which was a Muslim rule state in the days of the Raj. It is now 99.9% .9 of the time Hindus and Muslims live side by side. India is the ultimate secular, pluralist country but, where freedom of speech, rule of law. It, it, it go to any village, and on the edge of it are those that are not allowed to take part. Don't tell me that isn't so. And it goes um, so far as to have uh, their special reservations for the, the scheduled cast. Which have not to, worked. They are which working. Which have not they, allowed they, for... You look at the for, progress that's taken place over no the decades. There's almost no social mobility. 
Th this is one of the great problems well, in what India. What about how and, can you say and, no and, social mobility? And, and, Look at President Narayan. And President Narayan was uh, was a Dalit there are and became president there are of isolated India. Examples. And I was privileged but, to know him. But, it was an inspiration. Inevitably, there are isolated examples. But we're in a situation where Hindu dogma seems to put, seems to exclude those who are not part of um, the, higher, the higher order, let's say, the higher order. But, but you live here in a very inclusive society. Should we be rolling out the red carpet to a, an individual who is very definitely, I'm sure it is indisputable, that he is a Hindu nationalist? Well, he belongs to the BJP. He has been a member of the RSS in the past. But he is a prime minister. That's viewers but, perhaps but, need but to know is an he, extreme right-wing organisation. But he is a prime minister who's been democratically elected. He's a prime minister with a vision for the country. He's just lost. Soon after he became prime minister, he lost an election in Delhi, the capital city, right under his nose. He's just lost in the state of Bihar with over 100 million people. He's just lost an election there. Democracy, Indian democracy, is, is the greatest... So maybe, greatest may, maybe your concerns are being addressed by the people themselves. Absolutely not. Um, Modi's very, very good at evading um, all the questions that, that become difficult. Um, uh, the questions around his governorship during the riots of, of, in Gujarat in 2002 and the, the murder of a thousand people and more um, have simply been forgotten. Those who try and investigate have been um, uh, put under house arrest and, and harassed. This is just systemic. It's become, it's become part of um, the process of touch me not, Quick, I'm Modi. Quick final word. Well, what happened in 2002 was awful, awful. However, the op uh, his opposition, the Congress, were in power for 10 years, 10 years, and he was never arrested or convicted of anything. He is a democratically elected Prime Minister of India with a clear vision to take India and the UK-India relationship forward. This is a great I, vision afraid to take that forward. What is clear for viewers is that there are two very distinct views here, and I'm very grateful to you both for exercising them. Cathy. Thank you, John.